Hey guys, and here we are back as promised with another follow-up video on the Xiaomi Notebook Pro and Notebook Air. And in this particular case, as requested by a lot of you guys, a real-world performance test in terms of Mac OS or Akintosh. And I will also compare with my MacBook Pro 13 inches right over here. And also, out of curiosity, my Akintosh, which is back there. <laughs> And we are back and let's start with two notes right over here one of which is that the main point of this video is to compare the Xiaomi Notebook Air and the Notebook Pro but uh, including the MacBook Pro 13 inches and my Akintosh we can have a better idea in terms of performance what we can reach not only with these two machines but also with other machines available on the market and that will help us to decide later on which is the best way to go. The second note is just about QuickSync just for those of you that are wondering hey Robert is QuickSync enabled? The answer is yes it's enabled in all machines. Now the Notebook Air and Notebook Pro from Xiaomi I just had to install macOS and QuickSync was enabled. MacBook Pro of course it is enabled by default and the only one that I had to enable was my my Akintosh and I did share a video about that so if you don't know what I'm talking about just check down uh, below. Now let's start with some pricing really quickly right over here so that we can check out what we have and we have the Notebook Air which is the cheapest one roughly at 870 US dollars and then the Notebook Pro at $1080 at this moment of course of the recording. MacBook Pro costing about 1300 US dollars on the US plus taxes here in Europe the price is a little bit different we are talking about 1550 euros taxes included and then finally my Akintosh uh, costs roughly 1500 euros or 1800 US dollars but in terms of the Akintosh uh, what I can say is that depending on the hardware that we use we can get a lower price or of course a more expensive Expensive. But I will leave all the links down below for the laptops and also for the components that I'm using back there so that you guys at the end of the day can make a better comparison. And of course, if you are in the market for a laptop or a desktop, that this video can help you to decide which way to go. And that said, let's go for our first benchmark, which is Geekbench 4. And as you guys can see on screen, there is quite a difference right over there. Now, the Notebook Air really close to the MacBook Pro 13 inches, as expected, because these are almost with the same specifications. And then the Notebook Pro with uh, a higher single core score and almost a double or more than the double on the multi core score and then finally my Akintosh with uh, the double or almost the double of the Notebook Pro. Now Geekbench 4 is one of those benchmarks that really helps us to decide a device because we will find uh, several numbers that we can compare and also when we are choosing a machine based on the CPU power Geekbench 4 is one of my first benchmarks that I will rely on. Now moving on to Cinebench, as you guys can see on screen, we will see more or less the same differences in terms of results, in terms of CPU and also in terms of uh, GPU. Having in mind that all the laptops uh, are not using dedicated GPUs, only the integrated GPU. The only machine here with dedicated GPU is my Akintosh. And at this moment, I'm not using the NVIDIA, I'm using the AMD 560, but I will share a video in a couple of weeks uh, sharing my experience with NVIDIA and AMD in this particular machine, but that's for another video. Now moving on for the next benchmark and we are talking about Unigine Valley. Have in mind that I use the extreme preset so that you guys can compare with other machines that you will find on a web and the results are really simple guys. What you can see right over there is that none of those notebooks were made uh, to play games, at least triple A games under Mac OS especially because none of them are using dedicated GPUs. Now, the advantage here goes to the Xiaomi Notebook Air and Notebook Pro because they have a de dedicated uh, NVIDIA GPU, the MX150, which is disabled uh, here on macOS, but we can just reboot the machine, 
uh, and boot with Windows and then we will have access to the dedicated GPU and will allow us to play some games. I will share in a few days as well a comparison between one and another in terms of gaming. But today we are talking about productivity so let's go for the first test and here we are talking about recording a screen with ScreenFlow uh, and what I did was basically to record 10 minutes of footage and then just render that footage. Now guys I'll post on screen the results and as you can see right over there um, the Notebook Air takes 13 minutes and 40 seconds to render and then the MacBook Pro 14 minutes, uh, 14 minutes and 5 seconds follow up by the MacBook Pro with 10 minutes and 9 seconds and lastly my Akintosh with 5 minutes. So we will see quite a difference, not huge but is a difference right over here. Now moving on to Final Cut Pro 10, as you guys can see on screen there's also a difference right over there. We will have roughly 6 minutes on the notebook here, 7 minutes and 20 seconds on the MacBook Pro 13 inches and then on the notebook Pro 4 minutes and 17 seconds and on my Akintosh 3 minutes and 33 seconds. Now in here I would like to leave a note which is for most people uh, that will look into the Akintosh world, they will look into tools that we can't find on Windows and at least that's one of my reasons and Final Cut Pro 10 is one of those. Now Final Cut Pro 10 has one of the huge advantages which is a a tool that will render videos really fast. As you guys can see, uh, weaker machines like these laptops will be able to render. Even my wife's MacBook, I've shared in the past, that it's capable of rendering video and editing and so on and so forth. So right out of the bat, if you guys ask me, hey Robert, I just want a machine to uh, edit videos in Final Cut Pro 10. Will I be okay with the Notebook Air running Mac OS? I would say that in terms of performance, you will have no issues at all, as you guys can see on screen, and it will save a lot of money compared to a MacBook Pro uh, 13 inches. On the other hand, if you really need the extra power in terms of CPU while on the go to do some other tasks, as we will see in just a few moments, like Adobe Premiere, then probably the Xiaomi Notebook Pro. But this is something that you guys will have to decide depending on your workflow. Now, talking about Adobe Premiere, that was my uh, last test and as you guys can see on screen as well on the notebook here we will take roughly 25 minutes and 20 seconds on the MacBook Pro 13 inches 25 25 so really close one to another I would say that the same time and then the uh, notebook pro with 16 minutes and lastly my Akintosh with 7 minutes and 30 seconds now as you guys had the chance to see in terms of Adobe Premiere and we are talking roughly the same timeline now the difference between Final Cut Pro 10 is that I did use some effects and some things here and there and on the Adobe Premiere only a timeline with no effects at all but this is general knowledge I believe Adobe Premiere is a lot heavier than Final Cut in terms of rendering so we will get huge differences between one and another. Now the last test that I did was just a comparison because uh, these machines as have the GPU disabled on the Mac OS but on Windows we can take advantage of the actual GPU. So what I did was Adobe Premiere on Windows and then we can see that uh, the Notebook Air takes 18 minutes and 35 seconds which is 7 minutes less than on Mac OS and the Notebook Pro takes 11 minutes and 51 seconds which is 4 minutes less than on Mac OS. And in here guys the difference is mainly because of the GPU which is disabled on Mac OS and enabled on Windows. And that is it guys. In terms of real world performance these are the results in terms of rendering, in terms of recording, in terms of editing. You will be fine with these machines in editing on Final Cut Pro 10 and also on uh, Adobe Premiere. In terms of rendering times of course one of the options to go Mac OS is Final Cut Pro 10 so I would advise on trying Final Cut Pro 10 at least. If you really really love Adobe Premiere then I would stick with Windows, no need for Mac OS at all, especially because you will take full advantage of the hardware that these two machines have, unlike Mac OS that we can't take advantage of the uh, 
dedicated GPU. And that is it. In terms of conclusion, guys, this is it. My opinion still stands. These are two great machines, different from one another. And you guys have seen the differences in terms of performance, in terms of battery tests that we did in the past. And in the future, I will bring some gaming and so on and so forth. I do believe that these are great machines for their price. And I also believe that running macOS as a bonus for these uh, two machines is just a great option in terms of fun and for those of you that love to use both operating systems at a lower cost than a macbook pro it's not a bad option in my opinion guys hopefully this video was helpful and if it was don't forget that usual thumbs up my name is Roberto George and I'll see you guys on the next one